Father, as always, Lord, we, uh, we love you, Lord, and we are just grateful tonight for your word. Lord, uh, just considering all the things that we're going to talk about tonight, I just, I'm grateful, Lord, and, and I pray that every single one, one listening, whether we're in this building or whether we're tuning in online, um, would truly appreciate the fact that we have your word. Lord, there's so much value that we find in your word, so many benefits, so much blessing that comes because you have taken the time to ensure that we have everything that we need. And, and uh, I'm just grateful for that. And I pray that that would be all of our hearts. Excited, Lord God, every time, wherever we are, whatever book we're in, whatever verses we cover, it doesn't matter. It's from you. And for that reason, Lord, we should be excited. Desiring, Lord, with expectancy to receive whatever it is that you have for us tonight. And so I pray, Lord, that you, by your spirit, Lord, would prepare us now. Lord, prepare our hearts, remove distraction that we could truly hear from you and receive all that you desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, good to see you tonight. Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8 tonight. If you're taking notes, again, you can write down Proverbs 8, uh, 1 through 36. Those are the verses in the chapter, and so we'll be covering the whole chapter tonight. Proverbs chapter 8. Now, as I continue to do, and I will continue to do this, not only as a good reminder for everyone else, but also my heart is that anyone that would tune in on YouTube or, you know, check us out for the first time, that they would understand why we have what we have. Why Solomon took the time to record what we have. And so again, I always begin at the very beginning with the purpose of the book, okay? The purpose, Proverbs 1, 2, is that we would know wisdom and instruction to understand words of insight. That's why we were given this book, that we would learn, that we would grow, that we again would truly come to know what wisdom is. Now, it's very important. We defined wisdom as the practical application, practically applying the knowledge that we have, right? Knowledge is good. Knowledge is power. We need knowledge, but more than knowledge, we need to know how to use that knowledge to benefit our life. And so again, wisdom is that it refers to the skill or expertise or competence that understands how to achieve success through the proper use of knowledge, okay? We should all be bookworms. We should all be studiers, regardless of how old we are. We never stop growing. Someone say amen to that, right? We should always be growing. We should always be learning. We should always be reading something or listening to something. I will tell you again, on a personal note, I am reading every day and or listening to different podcasts or sermons. Again, we're going to fill our mind with different things. How about fill our minds with good things that will help us, that will grow us again, so that we're constantly growing. And so very, very important. Again, we should all be doing this. And so the whole book of Proverbs, essentially, remember, is to teach us wisdom. The wisdom that God gave to Solomon. Solomon then took the time again to pass on these skillful instructions for life so that we can benefit from them. And if you've been with us, we know again that Solomon wanted to pass this wisdom on to his children. That's what we've seen chapter after chapter, right? Beginning Proverbs 1.8, hear my son, your father's instruction and forsake not your mother's teaching, We've talked about it. Every parent's role, right, should be, again, to pass on to our children what we've learned. Both God's word, number one, and life experience, life lessons, right, that we have learned. We've been around the block more than our kids have. And so we need, again, we have that responsibility to teach them so that they hopefully will have better lives than the lives we we lived, that they don't have to repeat the same mistakes and make the bad choices that we made. And so if you've been with us again through the first seven chapters, Solomon has been imparting wisdom to his son or sons or children, applies to girls as well. Guiding them, that's, that's the desire, that wisdom would guide them, would keep them on the right path and protect them from sin, from evil, from making bad choices. And through the chapters, we've covered how wisdom benefits us, 
Financially, we covered that. Socially, even spiritually. Lesson after lesson. But the key thing, again, is that we need to come to that place, all of us, and I'll keep saying this, regardless of how old we are, regardless of how many years we've been serving Jesus, none of us have arrived. We all should maintain, let me say this, a teachable heart, okay? Teachable heart. It doesn't matter. And I want to be crystal clear. It doesn't matter. None of us are there yet. None of us know it all. There's always something that we can learn if we take the time again to listen. Solomon said something very powerful. And I hope, I want you to look back, but I hope you highlighted this verse in your Bible in case you didn't. Back in chapter four, Solomon said this. And you can take a look at your chapter four in verse seven. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. We would say wisdom is the most important thing. That's what he said. He says, therefore, we better get wisdom. Remember, he's talking to his kids. Therefore, you better get wisdom because that's the most important thing you better get. He says, in all you're getting, how many of you know that we're all about getting? All of us are, right? We want this and we want that. We want the next thing. Solomon says, in all of your getting, how about get understanding? How about get wisdom? That's what you should be seeking after. How many of us, let's be honest, don't raise your hand, but how many of us, again, have sought after the wrong thing? How many of us have spent money and time and effort pursuing things that we thought we wanted, that we thought we needed, only to find out it was... It was a waste. We've all been there. We've we've all done that. I need this. I need that. I need the other thing. And again, we didn't. We thought we did. And we wasted our time. All of us parents or grandparents need to pass that on to our kids. Because we know the older they get, right? Just like we experience They're going to see the world and everything that's in it, right? All the shiny gold, everything that they think is calling them. And they're going to want it. And they're going to want to seek after it, right? They're going to want to go get it. And as soon as they're on their own, as soon as they're adults, right? They want this, they want that. Just like we did. And so we, just like Solomon, again, need to explain to our kids what they really need. They need Jesus. That's what they really need. And the Bible declares that Jesus is the wisdom of God. Very, very important. Now last week, if you were with us, remember chapter 7, Solomon told his son a story about a young man that he had witnessed. Remember he said, I looked out my lattice window and he saw a young man pursuing sexual satisfaction. Remember that? He watched. He's recounting the story to his son. He knows, again, every young man, every young woman is going to want to seek stuff. They're going to want to go after stuff. They're going to think that they need something. And he's relaying this story to his son. Son, I I watched as I looked at my lattice, out my lattice window. And I seen a young man. Oh, he was pursuing what he thought he needed. And he went to this woman. A married woman who was dressed, remember, like a prostitute. She was just going to use him. And he would be the one that would end up paying the price. And Solomon told his son that as a lesson. Your flesh is going to want things. You are going to desire things. And because you're going to desire things, you need to choose the right thing. And that's very, very important. And again, it's very important for all of us. We're all going to pursue something. We're all pursuing something now. The question is, are we pursuing the right things? We have to ask ourselves that. Only we know, right? Are we seeking after the right things? If I were to ask everyone, what do you want in life? Is it the right thing? Because it so easily, again, we can seek after the wrong thing. But guess what? We get to decide, don't we? We get to decide. But think about something. How many of you understand? This is really interesting. How many of you understand 
that the devil knows what you want. Is that true? Oh, he knows what you want. I truly believe that our whole life, he has had demons, just as there are guardian angels, I believe there are demons that are there our whole life to influence us and to whisper in our ear and just to watch us. And they know what we like. They know what we look at on our phones. They know what we watch on TV. They know what makes us take a double take. They know what puts a smile on our face. We know what I'm talking about. And they watch us and they know. Every single one of us, man and woman, they know. And so we better understand that. That if we're not careful, Satan is going to give us what we want. Because he's out to steal, kill, and, and destroy. Which is why we have to be careful to seek after the right thing. All of us. We have to be careful to seek after the right thing. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. Solomon knows, again, his children, his sons, his daughters are going to want things in life. They're going to chase after things. And so he wants to make sure that they understand that they need to seek after wisdom most of all. Because this is what will enable them to succeed. This is what will keep them on the right path. This is what, again, will ultimately enable them to succeed in life. And that lesson, again, is a lesson that all of us need to hear. I truly believe, myself included, we need to be reminded of that tonight. If you're taking notes, again, you can write down the value of wisdom, okay? The value of wisdom. We're going to cover Proverbs chapter 8, whole chapter, verses 1 through 36. We're going to look at the value wisdom brings to those who seek it, or we would say to those who seek after it. And that's important. We have to seek it, just like we seek everything else, just like we seek making money, just like we seek after a spouse, just after we seek after whatever we want. If we really want wisdom, if we really desire to acquire it, we need to seek it diligently. We need to go after it. We need to put in the work to attain it. And that's what he's going to talk about tonight. Number one, the first thing we look at is the reminder that wisdom is available to everyone. That's good news, right? Wisdom is available to everyone. In other words, if you want it, it's available. It's available. Let's pick it up here again. Verse 1, chapter 8. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise, notice, her voice? Now, Again, if you were with us last week, I mentioned already that Solomon looked out his window and saw a young man headed down the wrong way. Headed towards a, an adulterous woman, Solomon described, who was inviting him in, wasn't she? She was offering her services to this young man. And that's what he was seeking after. He was seeking after sex. Sinful sex. Again, not only, not only was, it, was he not married to this woman, but she was married to someone else. And it's interesting. Because there will always be people that we will come across that invite us to sin with them, right? We can all relate to that. That's what this woman did, again, as recorded in chapter 7. But unlike this woman that was offering out, that was speaking out to this young man, inviting him in, we now read about wisdom calling out. Wisdom raising her voice. Because in the same way that there will be sinful influences speaking out and inviting them to join us or to join them, wisdom invites us. To, to receive her. She speaks out. And he uses again that this female tense. She's speaking out. She is offering herself to us as well. But this is a good thing, right? Wisdom is a good thing. 
She's offering herself to anyone, man and woman, young or old, who will receive her. Now remember, last week this adulterous woman, she was not speaking loud and and out in the open. Anyone who invites others to sin typically does it, we say it this way, on the down low. Isn't that right? Privately, sneakily, deceptively. That's usually how sin works. They don't broadcast it. We get that picture of someone in a trench coat. You guys with me? But wisdom's not like that. Wisdom has nothing to hide, right? Wisdom is speaking out. Wisdom is crying out. And it's a beautiful picture. Openly inviting everyone. I'm here if you want me. Not privately or on the down low, but publicly and out in the open. Because she has something to give. And she desires again that all of us would receive her to ourselves. Verse 2. On the heights beside the way. At the crossroads, she takes her stand. Besides the gates, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she, speaking of wisdom, cries aloud. Now I love it. Wisdom is there. And wisdom will meet us wherever we are. Isn't that right? Wherever we are. Speaking out to everybody and anybody, wherever we are, at work, at school, right, at church, everywhere, wherever people gather together. She will make herself available. And I love the fact that she's raising her voice. What does that mean? She's speaking loud enough that we can hear her if we listen. Even beyond all the noise of this world. Because what she has to say is that important. If we will only take the time again to listen and to pay attention to what she has to say. Verse 4. To you, O men. I call, and my cry is to the children of man. O simple ones, learn prudence. O fools, learn sense. Here we have, I'll call her Lady Wisdom, okay? Lady Wisdom inviting men and women everywhere, everybody and anybody to listen to her, to pay attention. I want you to think about back, especially back in these ancient days, do you understand that most people were uneducated? Only the rich could afford education. Everyone else was just common. But I love it because even in a time like this, wisdom is crying out to to everybody. Everyone can learn. Everyone can receive wisdom, again, regardless of their whether they have money or not, even the common man, right, can learn and be able to to use prudence, to, to, to make good choices, to use good judgment. This is wisdom. And wisdom, even today, right, desires to speak into our everyday life. But the question is, do we recognize our need for her? How many people, let's be honest, think that they know enough already? How many people stop learning in their life? Oh, I've read the Bible already, right? Oh, I've heard a hundred sermons in church. And they stop reading and they stop growing. And they reach a place again in their, in their, their walk where they're no longer teachable. What's the old saying? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And there are many people, again, maybe they don't want to admit it, but they fall into that category. No longer reading anymore. No longer putting in the time to study. And it's sad because they stop growing. They stop paying attention. They stop hearing wisdom's cry. Notice specifically, wisdom calls out to the simple ones. You guys see that? That refers to the naive. But also... To the foolish. Why? Because unlike those who consider themselves intelligent or smart or educated, the one thing about the naive and the foolish is they know they need wisdom. And I love it that she's speaking to those 
who understand that they need her. The wise and the, or the, well, I'll say the, the educated or the intelligent or the smart might reject her. They know enough already. But you know what? Those that can admit they don't know it all, that they are still naive in some ways, that they are foolish still in some areas, those are the ones that will pay attention. Those are the ones that will understand that they need her in their life. And so let me ask you tonight, can we humble ourselves individually and acknowledge that in many ways we still are naive? We don't got it all figured out. We still make foolish decisions. I do. We're not perfect, right? There's still areas that we need God's wisdom in our life. And so in order to get it, we need to humble ourselves. We need to recognize, again, that we are naive in some ways, that we are still foolish in some ways. But as we do that, we, we make ourselves teachable by recognizing, again, we still need wisdom. Now, this is, again, the instruction that James gave as recorded in James 1.21. James instructed, right, the church, Christians, believers, that we are to receive with meekness. What's meekness? Humility. We are to receive with meekness the implanted word of God, the word that gets implanted in our hearts, which is able to do what? Which is able to save our souls. Oh, we need God's wisdom. It'll keep us from ruin, guys. It'll keep us from making bad choices that will destroy our life, which is why the key to becoming wise is to accept Lady Wisdom's invitation. Amen? Let's move on. Second thing. Wisdom brings enrichment to life. Wisdom brings enrichment to life. Verse 6. Here, if you have a pen, underline here. For I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. From my mouth will utter truth, Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Now, unlike those who influence others to sin, they're liars. They're deceptive. They promise fulfillment and satisfaction, telling you that if you do this or do that again, that it'll make you happy. But that's not true. Any offer to sin is deceptive because sin will never satisfy. Oh, the Bible says it's fun for a season, right? But it always leads to regret. It always leads to consequences. And so unlike the adulteress, for example, in chapter 7, that offered this young man a, a night of pleasure. It was all deceptive because he was going to pay for it after. It was going to rob him of life. Her husband was going to find out. He was going to pay the consequences. But wisdom tells us again, look back. Here. Hear from me, right? Hear, for I speak noble things. She's telling us that what she speaks is never deceptive. It is always the truth, which is why we need to listen, which is why we need to hear, because she can be trusted. The word she gives, the knowledge and the wisdom she provides, right, is always right. She will always tell us what is right. How many of you would acknowledge that everything that God says, right, as recorded in his word, is right? We have any problems with that? Do we agree with that? Or is God wrong in some areas, right? 1% of the areas I question, right? No. Everything that God says, all of the wisdom that we find in his word is right. But let me ask you, just because it is right do we always agree with it? No. Do we? How many of you have a hard time sometimes with what God says? 
You see, wisdom, even the wisdom that we receive, sometimes is going to rub us the wrong way, right? We're not going to like it. It's going to be hard to swallow. But the good thing about wisdom is that we can always trust it. We might not like it. We might not even agree with it. Sometimes it's going to be hard for us to hear. But wisdom will always be straight with us. Wisdom will always tell us what we need to do again. What is right? She's never going to deceive us. She's never going to lead us astray. And that's what she's saying. My words are never crooked. It's never twisted. It's always straight, right? She says, I always tell you straight up. Because this is what you need to hear. Because this is good for you. And then I love that last part. Again, this is wisdom speaking. She says, everything I say, essentially, right? She says, they are all straight to him who understands. In other words, anyone who has knowledge and understanding knows that what I'm saying is true. And that is so true. People might have a problem with God's word. They might disagree with it. They might not always like it. But anyone who knows God knows that what God says is the truth. And for that reason, we can trust it. For that reason, we can trust it. Verse 10, take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. Now, I ask you to underline the word here in verse 6. Now, underline the word take in verse 10. Very, very important. Why? Because along with hearing the instruction that wisdom gives us, we also have to take it and apply it to our own lives. We have to receive it, right? It's not enough just to hear it. There's a lot of people, how many people come to church on a weekly basis, right? Sit in a seat, they hear the word of God, but they don't receive it. It goes in through one ear and what? Out the other. It happens. We can all be guilty of that. And so we can't do that. If we wanted to truly benefit our our life, if we want to reap the rewards of having wisdom, again, we have to apply it to our lives. And that's what Wisdom is telling us, right? Take my instruction. In other words, grab hold of what I'm I'm telling you. Grab hold of it. Now, I want you to get this picture in your head because I, I think it's really interesting. I want you to imagine grabbing hold of something with both hands. You guys get that picture? In order to grab a hold of something, right, with both hands so that you don't let it go, would we all agree that in order to do that, you have to let go of everything else? Is that true? We have to. Now, we struggle with that, right? Because if it's up to us, we try to grab everything, right? But we can't work that way. If you really want wisdom, right, we have to truly grab hold of her and not let her go, which means we must be willing to let everything else go. We can't have it all, which is why we have to decide what we really want. Do we really want the wisdom that God desires to give us? Or do we want other things? Do we want riches, right? Do we want silver or gold or jewels? Because many people do. Many people do. But wisdom is telling us, I'm better than that. What I have to offer you, what I have to benefit you is better than gold and silver and jewels. She says, all that you may desire cannot compare with me. She's telling us, right? She's letting us know. And I think this is really, really interesting. I want you to ask yourself, kind of an interesting question. (laughs) Ask yourself tonight. How many of you love the story when God appeared to Solomon and asked him what he wanted, right? Right? Now, we don't read about that very often in the Bible at all, but it's it's a pretty interesting lesson. Put yourself in Solomon's shoes, and, and let me ask you, what would you ask God for if he told you, I'll give you whatever you ask for? What would you ask God for? How many of you would ask for 
the super lotto numbers for Saturday. Anybody? Maybe. We think the money's the answer to our problems, right? Man, if I only won the lotto, you watch the commercial and you start getting all excited, right? Going la la land. What would you ask for? It's an interesting question. Let's be honest, right? We could probably go around the room and come up with different answers. If God said, like he did with Solomon, the Bible says God told him, ask what you want, Solomon. What would you ask for? Would you ask for silver or gold or jewels? What's really sad is, you know, social media, we live in a day where social media is so popular. And I'm hearing about things on the news. I've even read articles and studies about how our, 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 this next generation is so wrapped up in Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and all this Twitter and everything else, so consumed, right? That it's affecting them. It's affecting their, their personalities. It's affecting their self-esteem. And they look at the Kardashians and they look at all these people on there. And, and again, you know, the suicide rate, crazy right now. There was just an article, again, published yesterday uh, about the, the rampant suicide rate. How, I forgot the percentage, forgive me, but the, it, crazy right now. And specifically, girls, young girls. They look at the Kardashians and, and again, all these different people out there. And probably feel inadequate because they don't, they're not them, right? I wonder how many of them would want 10 million followers on their Instagram account. Oh God, I wish I was famous like them. And it's sad. It's sad. Now think about something. I'm not here to judge, but I don't think their lives, and I'm talking about celebrities, are everything that we think they are, right? How about lotto winners? How many of you have seen documentaries of people that won the lotto and they're already broke? Have we seen that? It's true, right? It's true. Crazy. Why? Why? Because they had money, these people have fame, but they have no wisdom. They have no wisdom. Does that make sense? It's sad. To me, it's embarrassing. You read things about LeBron James, right? Talented, one of the greatest basketball players that ever lived. You listen to some of the things that he says, and it's just like, dude, just play basketball. Just play basketball. Because he sounds foolish. And that's just telling you the truth. He sounds foolish. And the list goes on, right? Madonna, and you know, we can go down the list of so many celebrities, right? They have a platform, and they think they have this ability to speak out, and the things that they say are just foolish, because they have no wisdom. People, again, that won the lotto, and they're broke. Why? Because they had no wisdom. And so more important than money and fame and power and all of these other things that so many of our young people wish they had, Wisdom says, no, I'm better than that. What I have to offer you is better than that. I'm more important. I am what you need. Now, I love this because think about it. One of the things that wisdom teaches us is how to prosper, right? How to make money, how to keep money, how to appreciate money, and on and on. If those people that won the lotto had wisdom, they wouldn't be broke today. If those celebrities or famous people, again, had wisdom, they wouldn't say the dumb things that they say. And so we need wisdom first, don't we? Before money, before fame, before anything else, we need wisdom first. And essentially, I love it because what wisdom is telling us is something that Jesus would later say, right, in Matthew 6, that we need to seek first the what? The kingdom. Put God first, right? And God says, as you put me first, then... All these things will be added unto you. That's what wisdom is saying. Seek me first. Seek me first. Gain wisdom. And then everything else you're seeking after, I can help you with that. I can make you better at that. I can help you to appreciate that. I can give you the wisdom again that you can be successful with these other things. 
And I love it because, again, all of this is, is focusing on why wisdom is so important. Keep reading verse 12. I, wisdom, right? Wisdom is talking to us. Dwell with prudence, and I find knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. I have counsel and sound wisdom. I have insight. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me, princes rule and nobles, all who govern justly. Now, I love this because, again, wisdom is speaking to us, right? Wisdom is speaking to us. And she's describing us to her. She's describing her to us. She's describing her to us. And she's telling us what she has. We would say it this way, what she has to offer us. She can give us prudence, help us make good choices. She gives us knowledge. She gives us discernment or or discretion. Wisdom teaches us to fear God, right? To hate what God hates to stay away from sin. That's what wisdom teaches us. Wisdom provides, look at the words, counsel, sound judgment, insight, strength. It's wisdom, she says, that enabled kings and rulers to reign justly. How interesting. Remember, that's why Solomon asked for wisdom. Remember that? So that he could govern justly, so that he could lead justly, so that he can make the best decisions, right? To govern the people of God. That's why Solomon asked for wisdom in the first place. How sad. When you look at history and nations that rose and fell, they fell because their leaders had no godly wisdom. How sad today. We look at our country. We're not doing too well right now. When's the last time you guys put gas? You guys see what's happening with gas? And inflation? And crazy housing prices? I mean, our poor kids, at the rate things are going, they're never going to be able to have a home. Sad. What's happening? This once great country, you know, so many opportunities are just disappearing, and it's sad. Why? Because we have leaders that lack wisdom. Had they only had wisdom, had they only had the wisdom of God, this country would be in better shape. And I think it's so, so interesting. Wisdom is telling us, I'm what enabled kings and rulers and princes, right? To govern justly. But without her, again, we're we're in the predicament we're in. Look at verse 17. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently, underline diligently, find me. Riches and honor are with me enduring, or we would say lasting wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, in the paths of justice, granting an inheritance to those who love me and filling their treasuries. Wisdom is declaring that those who value me Those who take the time to seek after me, I bless, I prosper, I bring success when they take the time to appreciate me, to value me, right? I reward those, she says, with lasting riches and honor. That's what she does. Again, but we gotta gotta seek her first. We need godly wisdom in order to truly, again, succeed in this life. Without her, again, we'll never have lasting riches because we won't know how to appreciate it. We don't know how to value it because we have a wrong perspective about life, something that wisdom brings, which is why I love the next part. This is interesting. Even the Lord used wisdom. Even the Lord, even God himself used wisdom. Verse 22, the Lord possessed me. Remember, wisdom is talking. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work. The first of his acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water. 
Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. Before he, God, had made the earth with its fields, or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made from the skies above, or made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the children of man. Now think about what wisdom has told us. Wisdom has spoken about what she has to offer, the benefits that she brings, and has declared that through her, kings and rulers and princes, right, were able to govern and lead their people and their nations in the right way. And then she says, even God used me to create the world. That's pretty powerful. Even God used me to create the world. Declaring that as he designed everything and arranged everything and put everything in perfect balance. You guys know that we live in a perfect world. We really do. Now, we are imperfect people and we have brought sin and corruption into the world. But the world God made was, was perfect, wasn't it? Do you guys know that we are exactly the right distance from the sun? but not too far away, otherwise we'd freeze? Do you know we pivot on the precise axis that enables the earth to turn so that we experience all the different four seasons on earth? We have the right element, we have the right level of oxygen to breathe for things to grow, it's perfect, everything. We have the right amount of water on earth that allows us, again, to have enough land for us to live. Everything, again, so many details are in perfect balance from the heights of the mountains to the limits of the sea. We ever wonder, right, what stops the water from just flooding and taking over? God does. He made the earth right. right. He, he established it just the way he wanted it to be. And according to Genesis 131, after he was finished, he said it was good, wasn't it? God knew what he was doing. And wisdom says, he used me to do it. I was there in the beginning. God used me again to establish and to make a successful world for everyone to live in. Now, I love that because think about that. If God used wisdom to build a successful world, don't we need wisdom to build a successful life? How can we live in a way that will bring fulfillment without using wisdom. We can't. We need it. We need it. And I love it because wisdom is telling us that, right? You need me. Pay attention. Value me. Take the time to learn, to study, so that you can have me. So that you too, again, can build a successful life just as God built a successful world. Which is why we come to the last thing. Choosing wisdom is a must. Choosing wisdom is a must. Verse 32, 33. And now, O oh sons, O oh children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. And do not neglect it. Now, it's kind of interesting. As we have read what we've read, it's almost as if, Wisdom gave us her resume. You guys with me? Wisdom, how do I know you can help me? Because this is everything I am, and this is what I'm able to do. Even God used me. Princes and kings and rulers used me. I'm qualified. You need me. She's given us her, her resume. Which is why after making that clear that we need her, she tells us, you need to listen to me. You need to trust me. 
You need me. You know, I know again what I'm talking about. Now, we know that we find the wisdom of God in Christ Jesus because Jesus is the wisdom of God and Jesus is the word of God, isn't he? And so we find wisdom in the word of God. How sad that there are people today that will say that we are fools if we follow God's word. That we will miss out, right, on fun or whatever if we follow God's word. But how sad, that, how dumb that is, right? We will miss out. We will be foolish if we do not follow God's word. We end the chapter with wisdom promising blessing to those who keep her ways. Last verses. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me injures himself. We would say does themselves harm. All who hate me love death. I love it. Again, wisdom has, has spoken to us and she's made crystal clear how much we need her, how much we should value her. She, she will give us the keys to life, right? To living life successfully. And as we obey her, we'll find favor with God. What does that mean? We'll find acceptance from God. We'll find the approval of the Lord. Yet those who reject her, those who reject the word of God, do themselves harm. How many of you like uh, from our foundations class, 1 John 5, 11, and 12. Do we like those verses? And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his. He who has the son has life. And he who does not have the son of God does not have life. That's what he's saying here. That's what wisdom is saying. You have me, you have life. But if you reject me, you must love death because all, that's all that we'll have coming, which is why we need to choose life. Amen? Let's pray. Once again, Father, we thank you for just our time together, Lord God, with you, Lord. Thank you for your word. I pray that we would truly understand, Lord, we need you. We need the wisdom that only comes from you, the wisdom that only you can give, and you've given it, it to us in your word. And so help us, Lord God. Help us to understand, Lord God, that none of us have got it figured out. None of us have arrived. There are still areas in all of our lives where we need to learn. We need to grow. We need wisdom. And so I pray, Lord, we would humble ourselves and acknowledge that, Lord, and cry out to you and ask, Lord God, for your wisdom. Speak to us as only you can by the power of your spirit, Lord. You minister to us personally in ways that only you can. As always, Lord, we are just grateful, Lord. Thank you for your word tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand, God.